Hi and welcome to Studio One 5.3. The sound relation story is far from being finished, so in this video we're going to take a look at the new sound relations features in version 5.3. The first thing to mention is that the next sample player that supports the Studio One Sound Relations protocol is the Opus player from East West. So if you're using East West libraries with different key switches like the new Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition, these will auto-populate the sound relation list in Studio One. So if you're a user of the Opus player, make sure to update to the latest version 1.0.2. And also make sure to use the VST2 version in order to have the full sound relation support in Studio One. So let's go ahead with the number one feature request for sound relations. Switching MIDI channels. It's now possible to use sound relations with instruments and sample libraries that use MIDI channels to change between articulations or single patches. For example, here I've used contact to create a multi of choir instruments, each with a different syllable. And each of them receives on its own MIDI channel, so the R's are on channel 1, U's on channel 2 and so forth. To play these different instruments, I always needed to create different instrument tracks in Studio One and set them to different MIDI channels. Now I don't need to do this anymore, I can just use sound relations. Open the sound relation editor, add a variation and set the activation sequence to the new option, channel change. And I'm going to change the channel to number 1. And now I just add two more variations and as you can see the MIDI channels are automatically incremented. So I just need to name them and that's it. Now I can change the sound variations and this will send anything I play on the correct MIDI channel. Of course, this works with completely different instruments too, as you can see in this example. Here I have a piano, a harp and a synthesizer. And I can either decide which of them to play or I can apply different sound relations to different parts of this pattern. So this works with any library or sample player that uses MIDI channels for selecting articulations. So if you say you couldn't use these libraries with sound relations, now you can. By the way, if you don't want to miss Studio One tutorials like this one, please subscribe to my channel. For switching between different sound relations, there are two new very handy commands that we can find in the keyboard shortcuts menu and these are apply previous and apply next. So let's assign them to my keyboard. And now I can step through all the sound relations with just two keys on my keyboard, which is really, really useful for libraries that have a lot of variations such as VSL. Now I'm able to change between them extremely fast. I have even assigned them to buttons on my MIDI keyboard so I can play the instrument and just change to the next variation by pressing the button. Here's how that works. Go into the configuration of your keyboard controller, go into the learn mode, press the button on the keyboard, right click, make it a button and assign apply next. Maybe you have noticed this new plus button next to the sound relations list in the inspector. This button is going to insert the sound relation that's currently active. So if you have some notes and jammed a bit with different variations, you can now insert the variation that is currently selected in the list, for example here at the beginning. Or you can select some notes and apply it to these notes just by clicking this button. 
When you select a sound relation by right-clicking on the notes or in the automation lane, you will now see the currently active sound relation at the top of the list. And there's a new folder that's called used and it's just what it says. It shows you all the variations that you've already used on this track. In Studio 15.3 we have a new musical symbols tab that allows us to add symbols to notes and change the way these notes are played by the instrument. The cool thing about these symbols is that they are attached to the notes, so you can move notes around or copy them and they will always keep the symbols. And of course, this also relies on the sound relations feature. First, the symbols need to be linked to sound relations. This is done in the sound relation editor, which has been extensively upgraded in this version and includes a whole new section for musical symbols. Assigning a symbol to a sound relation is very easy and works via drag and drop. Just take a symbol and drag it to a sound relation. You probably don't want to assign all symbols for all your patches manually, so for this Presonus has created a nice feature that analyzes the variation names and tries to map symbols to corresponding sound relations automatically. So if I choose Action and Auto Assign Symbols, this will assign these symbols automatically, which works pretty well most of the time. Don't forget to set a default sound relation so that Studio One knows which one to choose if there's no symbol. And now, once this is done, let's add some symbols and see how they trigger different sound relations. To be able to see which sound relations are actually sent to the instrument, there's a new global track for variations that can be activated in this menu right there. That's pretty cool because if you have used symbols and sound variations, you could basically hide these automation lanes and still see which articulations are effectively used. And maybe you don't even need the sound relation automation lane anymore, since we can just select notes and use the sound relation list in the inspector. Or you use the find and apply variation command. I've made a whole video on this function, so if you like to become even faster with sound relations, check it out. Please let me know in the comments how you like the new features and for which of them you would like to see more videos. So far, thanks for watching and see you next time.